Today's Customer Creations is sponsored by Bits and Bits. Use the code JBates to save 10% off your next router bit or CNC bit purchase at bitsbits.com. Tool talk number 22 on this particular jointer. This is an Oliver 12 inch jointer. Now the whole point of this tool talk series is to have a destination that I could point people to for the commonly asked questions that I get about my tools. So uh, 12 inch jointer, uh, I wish it had a better model number. Here's a little just industry wide rant. I wish tool manufacturers would uh, make model numbers actually make sense. For the most part, they don't. For example, this is an Oliver, I had to write it down, Oliver 4265. What does that mean? 4265. Doesn't it make more sense to call this the something like the Oliver J12HH-4? Right, Oliver J, so it's a jointer, 12, so it's a 12 inch jointer. HH, it's a 12 inch jointer with a helical head, dash four, dash five, dash six, whatever, whatever the iteration of this particular design is, this model number. I don't know, that just makes more sense to me, but nope. Uh, Oliver's not the only company that does this. A lot of companies do this. This is the Oliver 4265. And I've memorized most of the other numbers with my machines, but I, for whatever reason, 4265, it's not just doesn't roll off the tip of my tongue. So this is a 12 inch helical head jointer. Uh, just gloss over everything really quick. It's a cast iron fence with a non cast iron mechanism behind it. Uh, control panel up here has keyed access, your stop slash emergency stop, start button, a Wixie remote digital readout. Uh, here's your elevation handle for the infeed table with a gauge right here to be able to uh, see how much your elevation is. If you want to go past one eighth of an inch, I believe it's one eighth of an inch, could be quarter. But if you want to go past that, you have to pull out this little depth stop lock, neat locking knob, and you can go all the way down to three quarters of an inch, not for jointing, but when you pull the fence up, up close, you can use that three quarter inch depth for rabbiting. Never done that, but you can. There are lifting hooks. Oh, amazing. Lifting hooks. Talk about those in a second. Uh, one on opposite corners. And then over here is this magical thing called the off button, which is awesome. The table is, if I'm not mistaken, seven and a half feet in total length. Um, 12 inches wide, of course. And it's heavy. It is really, really heavy. Uh, it took me a while to get it <laughs> into this exact position. Um, but it, it does the job really, really well. Uh, the only, I, I did have to make adjustments to the infeed table. If I'm not mistaken, when it arrived, I believe the outfeed was set perfectly with the, uh, the, the, the head, the head itself. Uh, but I did have to make some adjustments to the infeed to get it coplanar. No big deal. I mean, it, it, I don't want to make a tremendous amount of adjustments to a new tool, but I understand that you're probably going to have to because the majority of these things are made somewhere in Asia or the, the Eastern Hemisphere, and then they're all shipped over here to the United States where I live, and then they're probably arriving on the West Coast. I'm in Mississippi, so then it's got to take a truck ride all the way to where I am. That's a lot of logistics involved with getting a machine to this location, so I kind of understand that there's probably going to be a little bit of calibration work. I don't really worry too much about that, but it didn't take me too long at all uh, to get this thing calibrated. No big deal at all. Now, with the joint, it, one of the most satisfying things about a jointer is when it's dialed in and it's calibrated and it's just working completely perfect as it should. Uh, when, you, when you joint the board and you go to pick it up and it's like suction cupped to the outfeed table, that is so satisfying. And um, that's kind of how you know you have a really ca good calibrated machine. Uh, let me bring you in close. Oh, there's also a six inch dust collection port on this side. Let me bring you in close and we'll talk about all those things, starting with this fence and the goofy adjustment mechanism that I can't stand, which is, again, not specific to Oliver. It's just industry standard. It's kind of hard to get the camera in a position to show this entire fence system. But you have this adjustment linkage here that changes the angle, and then there is a another bar over here that goes all the way back that allows you to slide. Yeah, that's in the way. <laughs> you can see my hand still. Slides all the way forward, and the whole assembly slides forward, obviously, 12 inches uh, for the capacity of this jointer. So I understand why manufacturers implement this type of linkage system to allow 
the fence to be adjusted to different angles. Like, you know, you can have a, you have a bolt down here for a positive stop at 45 degrees. I understand the why, but I have never adjusted these fences off of 90 degrees. I don't understand why anybody would do that. I find, I think there's many other ways to cut a nice 45 degree chamfer, unless you're trying to make some absolute perfect perfect 45 degree joint along the long edge of a board maybe that's that's a reason to do it but I, I, I've never found that to be the case for my workflow so I just find this incredibly goofy and annoying to adjust so the problem with all of these it's not just uh, not just a characteristic of Oliver but I find that the positive stops are kind of pointless because every time you lock it down it changes the angle so if I was to put the positive stop down here on the bottom, this bolt right here, at absolute perfect 90 degrees, and then tighten this down, it pulls it away from 90. So what you have to do is you have to compensate for that pull and then make the positive stop incorrect. So the positive stop is leaning forward, and as you lock it down, it pulls it vertical. That's that's the way that my, my grizzly jointer was, that's the way that my hammer jointer was, and that's the way that this Oliver jointer is. It, it's just annoying. Uh, so I, I've never adjusted these past 90 and for the most part, I don't even take the position, you know, the move the lateral position, just, just leave it in place. So, uh, there's that the fence is structurally sound. It doesn't move when I don't want it to move and, uh, it produces 90 degree, uh, 90 degree cuts repeatedly and it works. I just... It's just overcomplicated for the very basic 90 degree use that I use it for. Main control panel at a nice convenient height, easy to reach while you're operating the machine. Key for security, emergency stop, start, Wixie digital readout, which I find to be absolutely pointless. Um, it works just fine, but I, I actually had to put batteries in here for this video to, to even talk about it because I, I just don't use it. I don't see a need for this. Maybe if you're like, you know, just if you have a need to remove a very, very specific amount via the jointer, I can see that, but I don't see a scenario where I need to remove a very, very specific amount. Uh, I can use the manual gauge down below and just by feel of operating the machine to know if I'm taking too aggressive of a cut or if I need to back it off and just be a little bit more shallow. So these numbers, in my opinion, are for me pointless. So I'm after I record this, I'm going to take my rechargeable batteries out. <laughs> so it's there. I don't know why anyone would use it, but it's there. Here's your elevation wheel for adjusting your cut. Uh, both my Grizzly and my hammer did not have elevation wheels and instead had a big lever handle that you adjust. And I find this, this to be far superior. I love the screw handle elevation adjustment much more than the handle. Of course, the handle will do just fine, uh, but I feel like this is a little bit easier to adjust just slightly. And uh, the overall motion of this, I just prefer. The uh, safety guard is the North American pork chop style safety guard. Just swings out of the way as you push your material through. Um, it is, it's obviously massive. This is a 12 inch jointer. So this is, this is considerable in size. Uh, but it's still strong enough to where it doesn't drag over there and strong enough to where I can leave my push stick uh, on it at all times. If I'm edge jointing, that never gets in the way. That push stick doesn't. And as I'm actually working, it's always right where I need it to be. Uh, this push stick, by the way, is the same style as my like table saw and just general shop push stick. I prefer this over anything else that I've ever used. Um, this is an inch and a half thick, so it's two by material, so it gives you nice solid reference surface that's not really going to wobble at all uh, versus something like a piece of half inch plywood, which will rock quite a bit. I like the wider base, and it's got a hook on the back side that can get chewed up and replaced. Uh, for the table saw use, this is absolutely perfect, and it's 16 inches in length, so I can put forward pressure down on the front of it as well as use it to poke and push stuff around as needed. Same exact style for the jointer, except the handle is moved forward and it's a little bit longer. Uh, and that allows me to, as I'm making the cut, you really want your downward pressure to be on the outfeed side. So as I'm making the cut, I can start to rotate this forward to put front, uh, front downward pressure. 
Not enough to lift up the heel on the backside, by the way, but just enough to put downward pressure on the front. And then as I'm pushing this through, my hand is way away from the cutter head, but I'm already past the cutter head. So now I can put downward pressure here and still pull the material through and then kick it forward or whatever as needed. Uh, but this style push stick is my absolute favorite, and this is the one for the jointer. So um, there you go. Highly recommend making one of these. Remember on the in-feed side, that uh, screw handle elevation adjustment, I think those are, again, far superior to this style, which is what I was talking about, just the handle to make your adjustment. However, this is the out-feed side. You really only adjust this during calibration, so having a handle here is not the end of the world. You're not going to be adjusting this every single time you use the, the machine or every other time you use the machine, so handle's just fine. Uh, Six-inch dust collection port and the other one of the lifting hooks over here. Behind the fence on the outfeed side of the machine is a platform here with four threaded holes that I haven't looked this up but just logically thinking uh, that looks to be to where you uh, where you mount the power feeder. If you want a power feeder attachment you mount it here. Again I haven't looked that up to confirm it but that's just a little bit of common sense logical thinking. This little piece of plastic in the fence was my only annoyance with this machine but then I realized that it's more of a technique situation than it was the machine being faulty. Uh, so this piece of plastic is not really flush with the metal. It's inset just a little bit so that this catches right here. As I was jointing at first starting to use this machine, as I was jointing the wide face first, this narrow face over here up against the fence wasn't jointed, right? Let's just say that this was a live edge or maybe it was a bandsaw face. Regardless, this corner was sometimes uh, poking into the fence or the, it was a contact point on the fence and as you push through it was catching. Well that's completely a technique situation. Just don't use the fence when you're jointing the wide face. Aha, no big deal, right? Uh, so that was kind of an annoying and something to kind of figure out. Uh, part of me thinks that this should be a little bit better fit. Other part of me is like, well no, if you just simply go away from the fence it's problem solved. When you're jointing on edge like this, where the wide face is up against the fence uh, that's already been jointed and you're just getting that narrow face perpendicular, it's never been in the way. So minor annoyance at first until I realized, hey, quit being a dum-dum and don't use the fence when you're uh, jointing the wide face. Two things that I wish every large woodworking tool manufacturer would implement. Number one, lifting points. Right? If you're an engineer designing this machine, you should know all the ins and outs of this machine. Of all people, you should be the one to determine, hey, it's safe to lift right here. You're not going to adjust calibration if you lift right here. You're not going to bend any sheet metal if you lift right here. You're not going to break any handles or something's not going to slip or whatever if you just lift right here. Doesn't that make sense? I wish every tool manufacturer would have lifting points of some kind on their machines, whether it's a, a bent piece of metal like this and to form a hook, or if it's just a, a, an inset D-ring or something like that. Something that says, hey, we designed this machine, we know this machine, we know where it's the best to lift from, and it's right here. Doesn't that make sense? Every tool manufacturer should implement those. The second thing that I really like, and I think Oliver just needs a huge pat on the back with, is this full length off switch, right? You've probably seen a foot pedal off switch and brake on a bandsaw. My bandsaw's got one. Um, super handy, super, super handy. And having one that's full length on this particular, now it's not a brake, it's just an off switch. Full length on this particular machine is just so handy. Um, Let's see, we're going this way, which my back will be to the camera. Let's just flip it around this way. You're, you're pushing your material through, and your hands are on the material. Doesn't it make sense to just... Doesn't that just make sense? <laughs> it just makes sense. Now, I will say that this is in a good location. As you're pushing the material through, you can still reach over and hit it. You can still do that. You can, you can just let the material sit on the table, walk over here, and then do that. But I'm just saying, once you get used to grabbing the material and turning it off that way, it's it's something that's so simple that just, it's so welcomed. I wish every tool manufacturer had a way to shut the machine off 
near the exit side of your flow through the machine with your lower body. And a lot of these tools do have that, like the Oliver planer that you can see right here. This is the off button. So as I'm, I have to go back to the machine, but I can use my thigh to shut it off. Same concept with a saw stop table saw, same concept with a foot brake on a band saw. So Oliver's not the only one doing it. I just think that they've implemented it the best way. A full length foot operated off switch. That's just awesome. And it makes so much sense. I think I covered everything about this machine. I purchased it six months to a year ago, something like that. I've run a lot of material through it. Uh, I'm happy and pleased with my purchase. Um, I had to do a little bit of calibrating, not much at all. If I had to do it all over again, would I buy it? Yes, I would buy it again. Uh, I think this is the best jointer that I've ever used. Specific jointer. Oh, something I didn't even talk about, I don't think, is the length of the tables. That was one kind of thing that I didn't realize wasn't a big deal until I got a much larger table. So my last jointer planer combo machine was a, a 16 inch hammer machine. Fantastic machine, absolutely fantastic machine. And I wasn't, it's kind of weird, like you're using the machine and I don't really think, ah, I wish there was more infeed and outfeed table. Didn't really have that thought. But now that I'm using this machine that has much more infeed and outfeed, I kind of, I'm kind of thinking, how did I get by without having this much infeed and outfeed? It's just a welcomed, welcomed feature. I believe the overall length infeed and outfeed is somewhere around seven and a half feet. Um, yeah. So there's that. Now I think that covers everything. Uh, six inch dust port. It's a three horsepower motor, single phase, 240 volt electricity service for it. Um, yeah, it's been a workhorse for me. I really like it. Thumbs up. That's it for this video. Go to my website, jayscustomcreations.com slash newsletter and sign up for my email newsletter so you don't miss anything that I publish. You guys take care. Have a great day and I'll talk to you in the next video.